Hello and welcome to this online introduction to BPMN. My name is Michal Brumbuli and I will present you what is BPMN and how to use it. BPMN stands for Business Process Model and Notation. It is an object management group specification. The primary goal of BPMN is to provide a graphical notation that is understandable by all business users. From the business analysts that create the initial drafts of the processes, to the technical developers responsible for implementing the technology that will perform those processes, and finally to the business people who will manage and monitor those processes. The BPMN specification is standardized by ISO IEC. BPMN provides multiple diagrams which are defined for the people who design and manage business processes. BPMN follows the tradition of flowcharting notations for readability and flexibility. In addition, the BPMN execution semantics are fully formalized. A process is a sequence or flow of activities with the objective of carrying out work. In BPMN, a process is depicted as a graph of flow elements, which are a set of activities, events and gateways connected using sequence flows. In this example, somebody is feeling hungry. So he decides to order a pizza and wait for the pizza to be delivered within one hour. When the pizza is received, he pays and eats the pizza, feeling satisfied. A sequence flow is used to show the order of flow elements in a process. Each sequence flow has only one source and only one target. The source and target must be events, activities or gateways. A sequence flow is a solid line with an arrowhead. This is called also unconditional sequence flow. A sequence flow can optionally define a condition expression indicating that the flow will be taken if the expression evaluates to true. The source of a conditional sequence flow can be a gateway or an activity. When the source is an activity, the sequence flow is drawn with a diamond marker. A sequence flow can also be defined as default. Such a sequence flow will have a slash marker. The default sequence flow is taken only if all other outgoing sequence flows are not valid that is, their condition expression evaluate to false. Note that if a default flow is present, then all other flows must be conditional. However, conditional flows can be mixed with unconditional flows. Activities represent points in a process flow where work is performed. They are the executable elements of a BPMN process. An activity can be atomic or non-atomic. Tasks are atomic activities, while non-atomic activities include sub-processes and call activities. A task is an atomic activity within a process flow. A task is used when the work in the process cannot be broken down to a final level of detail. There are different types of tasks identified by a marker at the top left of the task. A task without a marker is called abstract task. It is a generic task. A service task is a task that uses some sort of service, which could be a web service or an automated application. A send task is designed to send a message. Once the message has been sent, the task is completed. A receive task will wait for the message to arrive. Once the message has been received, the task is completed. A user task is a typical workflow task, where a human performs the task with the assistance of a software application. A manual task is expected to be performed without the aid of any software application. A business rule task is a mechanism for the process to provide input to a business rules engine and to get the output of calculation that the business rules engines might provide. A script task is executed by a business process engine. 
The script is defined in a language that the engine can interpret. A subprocess is an activity whose internal details have been modeled using activities, gateways, events, and sequence flows. A subprocess is a graphical object within a process. A subprocess can be in a collapsed view that hides its details, or it can be in an expanded view that shows its details within the view of the process in which it is contained. There are different types of subprocesses. An embedded subprocess is part of the normal flow of the parent process. It is triggered by its incoming sequence flows. An event subprocess is a specialized subprocess. It is not part of the normal flow of its parent process. Hence, there are no incoming or outgoing sequence flows. Unlike a standard subprocess, which uses the flow of the parent process as a trigger, an event subprocess has a start event with a trigger. Each time the start event is triggered while the parent process is active, then the event subprocess will start. A transaction is a specialized type of subprocess that will have a special behavior controlled through a transaction protocol. Like the embedded subprocess, it is part of the normal flow of the parent process. An ad hoc subprocess is a specialized type of subprocess that is a group of activities that have no required sequence relationships. This means that activities within the ad hoc subprocess are generally disconnected from each other. A call activity identifies a point in the process where a global process or a global task is used. The activation of a call activity results in the transfer of control to the called global process or global task. A global process is a process that can be called from another process. A global task is a task that can be reused or called in different processes. It can be an abstract, user, manual, script or business rule task. An event is something that happens during the course of a process. Events affect the flow of the process. The start of a process, the end of a process, a message that arrives, a timer that fires could be considered as events. There are three main types of events. Start, end and intermediate. The start event indicates where a process will start. The start event starts the flow of the process and thus it cannot have any incoming sequence flows. The end event indicates where a process will end. The end event ends the flow of the process and thus it will not have any outgoing sequence flows. Intermediate events indicate where something happens somewhere between the start and the end of a process. They will affect the flow of the process but will not start or terminate the process. An intermediate event can be attached to the boundary of an activity. This is called a boundary event. In this example, the triggering of signal 1 while A1 is being executed will result in the interruption of the call activity and the flow to T2 will be taken. An event can catch a trigger or throw a result. Start and intermediate catch events can catch triggers while end and intermediate throw events can throw results. Both trigger and result are represented by event definitions. Let's have a quick look at some event definitions. Messages are used to describe communication between different processes. This is a one-to-one -one type of communication. A message can be thrown by an intermediate and end event. It can be caught by start and intermediate events. Signals are used for broadcast communication within and across processes. This is a one-to-many type of communication. A signal can be thrown by intermediate and end events. It can be caught by start and intermediate events. Timers are implicitly thrown, meaning there are no throw events for timers. When they are activated, they wait for a time to elapse before triggering the catch event. A timer can be caught by start and intermediate events. The table shows all available BPMN event definitions. 
and the type of events they apply to. Gateways are used to control the flow of a process. The term gateway implies that there is a gating mechanism that either allows or denies passage through the gateway. The gateway controls the flow of both diverging and converging sequence flows, meaning that it can have multiple input and multiple output flows. The type of gateways are exclusive, parallel, inclusive, complex and event-based. A diverging exclusive gateway or decision is used to create alternative paths within a process flow. Only one of the paths can be taken. A decision can be thought of as a question that is asked at a particular point in the process. The question has a defined set of alternative answers. Each answer is associated with an outgoing sequence flow. In the example, either alternative 1 or 2 can be true, but not both. If neither of them is true, then the default path is taken leading to T3. When a path is taken, all other paths will no longer be valid. A converging exclusive gateway is used to merge alternative paths. Each incoming sequence flow is routed to the outgoing sequence flow without synchronization. In the example, if the flow from T4 has been taken first, the gateway will trigger without waiting for the flow from T5 to arrive. A parallel gateway is used to create and combine parallel flows. A diverging parallel gateway creates parallel paths without checking any conditions. Each outgoing sequence flow is taken upon execution of this gateway. The converging parallel gateway will wait for all incoming flows before triggering. Unlike the exclusive gateway, the converging parallel gateway will synchronize its incoming flows. A diverging inclusive gateway or inclusive decision can be used to create alternative but also parallel paths within a process flow. Unlike the exclusive gateway, all condition expressions are evaluated. All paths with expression evaluating to true are taken. This means that all combinations of the paths may be taken from zero to all. However, the gateway should be designed so that at least one path is taken. A default path can optionally be defined to be taken if none of the conditional expressions evaluate to true. In the example, both expressions 1 and 2 are evaluated. Both paths are taken if the expression evaluate to true. If neither of them evaluates to true, then the default path will be taken leading to T3. A converging inclusive gateway is used to merge a combination of alternative and parallel paths. A flow arriving at an inclusive gateway may be synchronized with some other flows that arrive later at this gateway. In the example, if the flow from T4 arrives at the gateway, it may or may not trigger the gateway. The gateway is triggered if there is no other flow in the process that can arrive at the gateway via T5. Here, the gateway waits for both flows from T4 and T5 before triggering. In the diverging complex gateway, the paths to be taken are determined by the condition expressions in the outgoing sequence flows, same as in the inclusive gateway. A converging complex gateway can be used to model complex synchronization behavior. An expression is used to describe the precise behavior. For example, the expression could specify that one out of the two incoming sequence flows from T4 and T5 is needed to activate the gateway. In this case, taking either of the paths will trigger the gateway. The event-based gateway represents a branching point in the process where the alternative paths that follow the gateway are based on events that occur, rather than the evaluation of expressions, as with an exclusive or inclusive gateway. A specific event determines the path that will be taken. When the first event in the event gateway configuration is triggered, then the path that follows that event will be taken. All the remaining paths of the gateway will no longer be valid. 
Basically, the event gateway acts as an exclusive gateway triggered by events. Unlike other gateways, the event-based gateway can be only diverging. In this example, if message 1 is received, its path will be taken. The other paths will no longer be valid. A traditional requirement of process modeling is to be able to model items, physical or information items, that are created, manipulated and used during the execution of a process. This requirement is realized in BPMN through various constructs, including data objects, data inputs, data outputs, data stores and data associations. These constructs do not affect the flow of the process. A collaboration is used to describe the interaction between participants. It usually contains two or more pools representing the participants in the collaboration. A message exchange between the participants is shown by message flows that connect the pools or the elements within the pools. A pool is a graphical representation of a participant in a collaboration. A participant can be a specific partner entity, example a company, or can be a more general partner role, example a customer or a vendor. A pool may be shown as a white box with all details of the contained process exposed, like the vendor in this example. Or it can be shown as a black box with all details hidden, like the customer. A lane is a subpartition within a process, often within a pool. Lanes are used to organize and categorize activities of a process within a pool. The meaning of the lanes is up to the modeler. Lanes are often used for such things as internal roles. In this example, the delivery boy is an internal role of the vendor. Its role consists in delivering the pizza to the customer. A message flow is used to show the flow of messages between two participants. A message flow must connect two separate pools. They connect either to the pool boundary or to flow elements within the pool. They must not connect two elements within the same pool. Let's put everything together in a simple example. This BPMN model describes the collaboration between two participants, the customer and the vendor. Both pools representing the participants are shown as a white box with their internal processes visible. The vendor process is organized in three roles represented by the lanes clerk, chef and delivery boy. The collaboration starts with the customer feeling hungry. So he decides to order a pizza. The pizza order will start the vendor process. Customer and vendor processes can proceed in parallel. The customer will now wait for the pizza. If the pizza is not received within 16 minutes, he will complain. In the vendor process, the clerk is waiting for complaints, while the chef is preparing the pizza. Let's make the customer complain. The clerk will try to calm the customer by reassuring him that his pizza will be arriving soon. Enough complaining. The pizza should be ready now. It can be delivered to the customer. The customer received the pizza. Now he can pay get the receipt and finally eat the pizza, feeling satisfied. This animation has been done with the Pragmadev process tool. Check the link in the video description to see how to animate and verify BPMN models. Thank you for your attention. For more information, please visit our website pragmadev.com.